Smells like fish. You got a dish. I'm the street guy here. Come and get it. Hey, ho. Joe, can you do me a favor, buddy? You think you could fillet those out for me? Save me the bones, though. Save me the bones. When I come back from work, I'll pass on by to see you, babe. Thanks a lot. Red Rouget with black olives and lemon. shows except this one's gonna burn the house down tonight i promise you you better believe it you know what they say there's a lot of fish in the sea right most people though they get caught in a trap they only like cook like one or two of the same fish over and over what am i gonna do with salmon what am i gonna do with salmon what am i gonna do with salmon it's like chicken you know what am i gonna do with chicken what am i gonna do with chicken so tonight i decided to use some unusual fish to create a few dishes, like skate wing with Grenoble sauce. Oh yeah, tastes like scallop. No, it doesn't, it tastes like skate wing. Some uh, fashionable monkfish, and I'm gonna kubi on it, which is a very New Orleans thing. Kubi on it, love that. And how about a, an old classic, a chilled mousse of pike served with a truffle and lobster salad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kicking uncommon fish up notches unknown tonight, boy, let me tell you. And you know where it's happening, right? Yeah. Right here on Emerald Live! <laughs> pretty cool. Welcome. It's not too powerful over here, huh? You know what they say, smells like fish, you got a dish, right? Actually, that's not what, uh, really what, what you should look at. Tell people all the time, they say, ah, it's fishy, I don't like that. Well, first of all, they got to go see my buddy Joe and they wouldn't have that problem. When you buy old fish, you get fishy dishes. Buy good fish, you're smiling, happy, happy. So I got a few uh, fishes that we're going to talk about. These are butterfish right here. Really, really tasty. You know, there's a fish like that very, very close. They don't call them butterfish in Hawaii, actually, that they, they kind of dive for. And actually what they do is they fry them whole, like fish jerky. Love that. Just have a few in your pocket, you know, just... <laughs> and uh, we got some herring, we got some white fish, we got some... Those red guys right there, those are called red mullets or rouget, fancy word. See, if you call them red mullet, it's like $1.15 a pound. Call them Rouget. Bam! They go up like three bucks. And uh, this here is some porgy, which is, uh, I love it. A little firmer. You know, what do you think this is? No, it's not a flounder. It's a fluke. You know why? When the eyes are left like that, it's a fluky thing. When they're right, they're flounder. <laughs> it's a true story. I ain't making this stuff up. Go ask your local eye doctor. I'm sure they'll tell you. What a fluke. <laughs> this is a kingfish here. Another beautiful thing. This is from the Gulf right here. This is called cobia. Joe, do you get a lot of that stuff in? Cobia? Lemon fish? Good stuff, huh? I'm going to tell you all about Joe later on. He's my man. And, uh... Well, we won't go there right now, anyhow. We're already fluked out as it is. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but uh, you know the man is in the house, Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. 
Matter of fact, right after the break, I'm going to show you about some skate wing with Grenoble sauce. I would stick around if I were you. Stay with us. <laughs> Hey, you know, it's uncommon fish. You got white fish, Boston mackerel. Ooh, feeling right back at home, Hilda. Got some whiting. Ah, whiting. Striped bass, farm raised. Ah, big deal. Arctic char. Have you ever seen an Arctic char? Get a load of this Arctic char. See that? Look at all these beautiful little stripes on it. Ooh, from the Gulf. Pompano. Whoa. <laughs> Everybody, we're uh, it's getting pretty fishy in here. We're doing a little uncommon fish. And some of those uh, clips that you'll be seeing is from our good friends, care of Citronella here in New York City. Unbelievable market. And Joe, right over here, is my buddy. He's the he's the guy that runs the fish area. So you ever need fish for a great dish, go see Joe. He's the man. This next dish that I'm doing. Oh, before I go, I got to give you this, like, because you'd think I'm like wise tailing all the time. See this here. This is monkfish. You'll never see monkfish with the head on in the market. Forget about it. I can tell you that right now. Actually, in France, years ago, it's also considered, the name of it is considered the poor man's lobster. Years ago, it was outlawed in France to even bring them inside of the docks because they would just scare the passerbys as they were walking around because they're so ugly, really. <laughs> I mean, you know that movie with, you know, da -na -na -na? they should have used the monkfish head. Okay? That would have really done the trick. So you don't come with the heads on. They whack the heads off, and then you can just buy them. And it's the tail, really, that's like the prize, the prize thing. And uh, those things right there, I didn't really go to because my friend was getting nervous over here. But this is actually skate. But after a guy like Joe cleans them all up, nice, nice, which you should, uh, you should have your fish guy do for you, they're absolutely delicious. Big skate wings years ago, there was like a big uh, scam going on. Not that we would do that. We're reputable people, Joe and I. But remember years ago, they, the big skates, they used to bring them back and they were punching them out. And they were trying to sell them as scallops. That's why when you buy scallops, a lot of the fishermen guys, the good quality ones, they'll leave the abductors on the scallops so that you know they came out of the shell. That whole scam started about 20 years ago or whatever, probably longer. But skate is really, really delicious. When it's all cleaned up, this is what it looks like right here. This is the skate wing, okay? And it's absolutely beautiful. That's another key what I was saying. I mean, look, you buy great fish from a great guy or great lady, you're going to have good fish. You go somewhere and, you know, you don't really trust them. You don't do business with them all the time. Hey, God knows what you're going to get. But I'm going to show you this classic dish that's inspired from the region of Grenoble's. Very, very classic dish in France. Very, very simple, too, but let me tell you, tasty. And you don't have to do this with just skate. You can do it with all kinds of things. We do this at the restaurant. It's phenomenal. Check this out. In this Grenoble's dish, they didn't quite have essence back then yet. So we're just going to use a little salt and pepper to season our fish. Both sides, too. So we're going to turn over the skate wing. Has anybody ever had skate here? No. You've had skate? Did you like it? Yeah. It's good stuff, huh? Did you ever go see Joe? No. You should check it out. It's like an aquarium over there, what they got. Now... Both sides, a little more salt, pepper. Oh, that's where my other pepper mill went. <laughs> now, get the pan ready. I'm going to show you what we're going to do. You take them and you dredge it in the flour, a little seasoned flour like this. And you stack them up, both sides. They cook fast, really, really fast, this dish. See, and they got this little texture thing that you can see. 
boy, they're tasty. Starting to see a lot more of this now on a lot of menus and a lot of restaurants. But you shouldn't be afraid to test and eat more uncommon fish. Now, I got a few of them done. Here's how simple this is. I got some white wine, butter and parsley, capers, lemons, of course, and some shallot. If you want to add garlic, you know, you can always add garlic. Olive oil. I'm using olive oil because if we put butter in there right now, it's going to burn. We we'll save the butter for flavoring at the end. Once that pan gets hot like it is right now, it's simple. You shake off that flour and you put the skate wing right in there like that. Then, we'll come back and do those other pieces. Listen, when you're cooking it, you know, you don't have to, like, panic. It's like if you don't have enough oil in the pan, you know, you don't need to go put five inches of oil in there. Look, you just put a little oil to saute it. If it seems like the fish is absorbing it or what you're using, no big deal. Just add a little bit more olive oil. I mean, what's the big deal? Now, we want to get a nice little brown, little crunchiness is what the flour is going to do. While that's happening, going to need a little accoutrement. So I got some more olive oil in this pan. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start sauteing some mushrooms and some onions. Beautiful combination. Oh, look, you guys think you're joining the party, huh? <laughs> Saute them up a little bit. A little bit of salt. Some pepper. You got to season it. All right, now, I'm going to use some tongs. You could use a fish spatula. That's what that is right there. It's designed like that for fish and the oil. Watch. See, so go right underneath there like that. Flip it over. Doesn't that look good? I oh, know. Where do you taste it? Flip it over like that. See, they look like little wings, you know? That's where they get the name like that. Now, you don't want to overcook fish. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of people, well, I don't eat rare fish. And I'm not telling you to eat it rare. Just leave some moisture in it, you know? Now, here's what we're going to do. Skate. What I like to do... Oh, these vegetables are looking good now. So what we're going to do now is add the beans, which have been blanched, and some baby carrots like that. Oh, yeah, we'll even give it a little, just kind of, just a little quick one like that. Now... If you want to steam vegetables, you just do this. Wow. <laughs> this guy is on fire tonight. <laughs> so we got the veggies. Now what we're going to do is this. They've already been blanched, the carrots and the green beans. No big deal. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use that as our bed. Got the family coming over now. Take our skate like this. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Trying to get away. See how nice you can see that? Looks like a scallop. Flavor of it. So it breaks. Look, it's not like they're going to turn your lights out. You know what I mean? <laughs> Now, here's what you do. Real simple. Add the shallot. Add the capers. Let that cook for about 45 seconds. If you want to fork a lemon, you can fork a lemon if you want. <laughs> Whatever makes you happy. Most nights I'm forking a lemon too. Tonight I'm going to squeeze it. That's how you know it's good. <laughs> Put that white wine in there, and then what we're going to do is we're going to finish it with a little parsley. All right, Hilda. 
and then as much butter if you want. You don't want a lot of butter, don't put it in. You get a little butter in there. Oh, relax, it's going to feed a whole neighborhood. Here's what you do, look. You kind of whisk that in there like that. Oh, and don't worry, you, uh, you wine critics out there, don't worry. I'm not going to pass it around and get everybody a, a cold. It's my own bottle, okay? <laughs> Look at that. That's how simple. Little salt, pepper. You get the dinner bell going like this, get the kids going, hey, kids, come on in. That's it. Dinner is served, Grenoble style. You see that? When we come on, when we come back, I'm going to do an incredible dish with that monkfish that's going to blow your mind. Stay with us. We'll be right back. They call them razor clams. Maybe we could get a few for Doc Gibbs and he could play the harmonica with these, eh? <laughs> Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody! I hope you didn't miss, uh, miss it. We did an unbelievable skate wing dish, Grenoble style, which is uh, all around. Go ahead, help yourself. Don't worry, if you can't find skate wings, or you know, maybe you're turned off by that, you know, you could use like maybe a black bass. Uh, you could use John Dory as another fish, uncommon, that you could use. You could use ling cod. You could really use anything that you want, particularly for that style. Just remember, if it's a big, thick, steaky fish, it's going to take a little bit longer. Speaking about big, thick, steaky fish, monkfish, another saltwater fish, uh, the poor man's lobster. Hey, you know what you're doing, huh? That's good, huh? Yeah. Poor man's lobster. Now, it doesn't really taste like lobster. It has the texture of lobster. And uh, you've got to clean it up. And then what we're going to do, what I have some right here. See, look at the texture of that. Just like, looks like a lobster tail. What we're going to do is we're going to cut them in about little pieces like this. When you buy in whole fish, you should really get a rapport with your fish monger or your fisherman fish guy at the store like we have with Joe. What you got to do is, if you don't have that relationship, and you're buying whole fish, you want to make sure that it doesn't look... I'm going to season it up, put it in the ice box. Now, I'm going to show you this unbelievable dish from Louisiana called Cubillon. Not caught bouillon, as in French cuisine or that I'm poaching fish in caught bouillon. See, there's 49 states, then Louisiana. <laughs> so it's spelled the same, but we pronounce it cubillon, not caught bouillon. Let me show you what that is. As my friend Marcel, and you hear me often say, who's your mama, is she Catholic, and can you make a roux? <laughs> True story. <laughs> we got some vegetable oil in there and some flour, and the first thing is, we're going to make a roux. And we got to cook that roux. We got to cook that roux until it's brown. You got to keep, once you get it dissolved like that, I recommend that you use a wooden spoon because you got to keep stirring it. It's a food of love thing, you see? How long do you cook it for? Basically, you know, there's an approximate formula, okay? But you want to get it really, really, really good and brown. This is the swap that I have right here. Look at this. You see how brown that is? It's like chocolate. So basically, sometimes I can't 
really uh, understand what people, they say, man, they steal everything here. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm serious. All right. Let's see. Maybe, ah, okay. So, I tell people, look, you just got to be patient. You know, it's a good time to make a couple of phone calls, if you want. You know, you stand in the kitchen, really good time. Because it takes a while for this food of love thing to happen on that temperature. The other thing that I tell people, the surest way to know that you're going to get it that brown is basically two beers, okay? By the time you finish two beers... Oh, yeah. <laughs> By the time you finish two beers, believe me, that roux is looking really, really good, and it's looking just terrific and ready. Now, if you're unsure about that formula, I don't know what to tell you then. It's worked for me. Mr. Blackie, he would tell me, he'd say that all the time to Marcel. He'd say, it's two beers. So, see, when you get it, that color, approximately, oh, 20, 25 minutes. Sometimes on a bad night, I burn the roux purposely just so I can have two more beers. <laughs> so, whatever turns you on, once you get it to that color, very simple, this is what we're going to do. We're going to add in the trinity. We're going to add some onion, celery, and some bell pepper. And to kick it up a notch, what I did is I took a couple of jalapeno. Not necessarily Louisiana, they would do that. But I figured for you guys tonight, why not kick it up a notch? So we're adding that in there. You get that roux in there, get it all stirred. Now the next thing is you want to start layering your flavors. Because that's what Kubion is all about, is a layer of flavors with this fish. So we're going to add a little bit of salt. We're going to add a little cayenne. Oh, yeah. Then after that cooks for about 12 minutes. You're down about one beer already. <laughs> Here, have a beer. Here, maybe this will quiet you down a little. <laughs> now, once you get it all in there, like I said, about 12 minutes, we're going to add a little water. And we're going to work that roux inside of that water like that. And we're going to add some tomatoes. Okay? And the garlic and bay leaves. Yeah, that is garlic in there. You're not... Yeah. You weren't imagining anything. That was really garlic. So, the tomatoes are going to let off this juice, you see? What's going to happen after it cooks really slow for like an hour... It's going to look like this. Check it out. Doesn't that look unbelievable? Doesn't that look unbelievable like that? No, you should smell it. Now, here's where we're going to do another level. We're going to add a little fish broth, a little fish stock. Like my friend Joe, he just saves the bones, make a little fish stock. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to finish this unbelievable inspiration of Kubion. And then, a classic dish of chilled mousse of pike. Stick around. We'll be right back. Stay with us. It's like a tuna like almost, huh? Right, we kind of cut it like a tuna. We, um, we fillet it and then we take out all the pin bones and we loin it out, just like, just like you would a piece of tuna. Comes out a nice loin with no bones in it. Terrific, Joe. Thanks a lot. I'll take six of them. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. We're uh, kicking it up a few notches with some uncommon fish today. And here's uh, the monkfish that we just sort of let get happy in the refrigerator a little bit. Let's check on our Kubion, because if you just join us, joining us, shame on you. You see how that's nice and brothy like that? Now watch this. Here's what we're going to do. Next thing you want to do is you want to taste this. Check out the salt and cayenne level. <laughs> mm. 
going to add just a tiny bit of salt. Then, take your monkfish. Put it right inside there like that. Happy, happy, right here. <laughs> That's it. Then what you do, put the lid back on it. You let it simmer for about 15, 20 minutes, depending on the thickness of your filet. And generally in Louisiana, how we would serve Kubion is with rice, parsley rice or green onion rice, and this fish, and a lot of that gravy over it or that Kubion over it. Ha, huh, talk about happy. <laughs> we'll come back to that. Now, there was a dish many, many years ago that was popular when cuisine was really evolving the last 20 years in America. And uh, you'd see them on a lot of menus, generally served cold or room temperature, generally as an appetizer or maybe as a hot appetizer, they would serve it with like a warm chive butter sauce. And it was called the mousse of pike. Pike is actually a fish from the nor northern hemisphere, pretty much available a lot, and a very thin fish that's really, really delicious and very sweet. And I got some uh, wonderful little pike fillets then I want to show you how to make this mousse. You can do this with any fish that you like. Maybe you want to do a mousse of codfish, or maybe you want to do a mousse of salmon. Hey, something else to do with salmon, right? <laughs> Here's what we do. In our little machine right here, we take the fillets of mousse, of, to make a mousse of pike. You could use sole. You could use a lot of things. Then, you want to sort of chop this, break it all down, the fillets. Once you start getting it pureed like that, it's your option or not of whether you want to run it through a sieve. And that depends on how stringy the fish is. If that is, you can do it through a sieve. Take it out, pass it through it. Now. To make the mousse, here's what you do. You take a couple of egg whites. Basically, that's what's going to hold it together. Another good tip for you, too, what you should do, is you should have this bowl cold before you start. Now I'm going to have some chives. I'm going to have some shallots. Then what we're going to do is I'm going to take nutmeg, a little bit of nutmeg. And you should always freshly grate nutmeg because it's so perishable. The flavor and the aroma goes away like poof, like that. If you got that jar in there that's been there like six months, you better throw it out. <laughs> Unless you want, like, the imposter. Little nutmeg. Then I'm going to uh, fork a lemon right now. <laughs> I just kind of see, when you don't want, really want to use the whole lemon. Just kind of make a couple of cuts like this in it. And then basically what happens is that you get the juice. Because I don't want the juice of a whole lemon. Just want a few nice drops for the acidity, to bring the acidity out in this. Then, a little bit of salt to season the fish. Pepper. And now what we're going to then do is put it back on again and let it stop blending. You save the liquid for last. A little bit of cognac is a beautiful thing in here. And then what you do to finish it, and you wait because you don't want whipped cream. You just want to have some cream to make like this mousse like this. You see? It's really pureeing like that. You don't want to get it too thin. It's not soup. Perfect. Ah, why not? Add it all. Okay. So, most people, I always tell them, look, you got to taste it, you know? Now, but, you know, you got to taste things when you're cooking. 
And then they say to me, but Emeril, it's raw. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now here's what you do. Get a spoon like this. Make a little quenelle. What you do is in some simmered water. Just drop it in there. This is what you're going to find out when that happens. It's going to cook relatively quick. You're going to find out if you got enough egg white, cream, etc., for it to hold together. And secondly, you got to taste it when it's cooked. Because if you were to do the whole dish, go through all this trouble, and then afterwards, what happens if it didn't taste good? So you always want to test that. Okay? That's how you test it to see. Now, once that happens and you're happy with it, then you get these little mousse rings like this, and you want to oil these and butter them. And then basically what you then do from that point is you just fill in the little rings like this. Like little bunt, little bunt pans, you know? And what I always find when you get them filled like this also, kind of smooth it out like that. Then you need to just kind of bang them a little bit like this. No, you do. It's a true story. I wouldn't lie to you. So that it can go down there in the air. And you fill them all up like that. Pour the water inside of there. A little bit of water so you create a water bath. And then you bake them really, really lightly. Okay? Now, let's check and see how our, uh, how our fish here is going to be. Our moose. Terrific. A little more salt. And that's why you do that. Now to finish this dish, after it comes out of the oven, you let it cool, and you can either serve it warm if you want, like I said, or you can stick it in the ice box. There's nothing wrong with having a cold mousse. Matter of fact, when we come back, I'm going to show you how to serve it cold, and then we're going to do cornmeal, crusted lemon fish. Stick around. We'll be right back. We're back, uncommon fish. And uh, just to recap a little bit, you get that moose of pike in there, you want to smooth it all out, bang it like I said, you're going to fill it in, put the water bath in, then you're going to bake it. Bakes really, really slow, comes together, really, really a beautiful thing. It's delicious. Now, when it comes out, like I said, you got to let it cool. And then you can, a little bit, because you got to unmold it. So you can either unmold it and serve it warm, okay? Or you can put them in the ice box and serve them cold. You see how that looks like that? Now, let's just say we're going to serve it at room temperature or cold. This is how I would finish it. I got some beautiful baby carrots that we're always looking for new things to do with and some peas. What we're going to then do is add, this is chervil. Looks a lot like parsley, but it has a wonderful flavor by itself. And then, I'm going to kick it up another notch for you guys and add some pieces of lobster meat. Oh. Eh, blow the budget, you know. <laughs> so what we'll do is we got the lobster meat like this. We'll add that in there. We'll save that one for... Uh... Then, tiny bit of salt so that it's seasoned. Fresh pepper. Then you can either use a little good olive oil so that you taste it, or you can kick it up another notch and blow like the whole wad and put a little bit of this incredible truffle oil on it like this. And then what you do, just sort of toss this. You can set these up ahead of time too. And then the thing, what you can do here to finish this up, what I like to do is put a little bit of lobster like this in the center. And then we we'll put a few little baby carrots like this. Then you do some more little lobster meat. A 
few more carrots like this. And then what I like to do is take a bit of these peas, you see? See, they don't think we really cook on this show, you know? <laughs> think we're playing around blowing bubbles. There you have it, folks, a moose of pike with a lobster sweet pea. Simple. Isn't that great? Now, here's the other thing. Like I said, you can use all kinds of fish. You don't have to use just uh, pike. Joe, you get a lot of pike at the store? Yeah. We handle pike. Go see fish. Joe. He'll straighten you out. <laughs> now, remember what I told you about the rice that we would serve this with, right? Check this out. Put the rice down in a little mold. Then you get that monkfish. That poor man's lobster like that. And then you serve. You want to serve a lot of that kubion. Probably in a bowl would be best. You serve that kubion gravy just like that. You want to talk about making you happy. <laughs> Finish it with a little bit of parsley like that. Little green onions. With that rice, oh man, you want to talk about good, unbelievable. So there is the monkfish kubion and the moose of pike with lobster, peas, and a little truffle. Which one you want? <laughs> Eeny meeny. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Bring it on. Make some friends. <laughs> I'll never go home again. That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> You know what you would do? The other thing that you could do is you could pretend you have Benny Hanna's and I could do this for you like this. Oh, yeah. oh, man. Thank you. All right. This is lemon fish from the Gulf. Beautiful lemon fish. And what we're going to do is we're going to season this lemon fish. Both sides. And then, this is like just some uh, cornmeal. Like, that's not been all the way processed. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of oil like this. Again, not five inches. How's the cool beyond? Wonderful. Terrific. Unbelievable, huh? Yeah. Very you like that? <laughs> Absolutely something else. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, fabulous. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to oh. press this right inside this cornmeal like this. Real lightly instead of flour. And then what I'm going to do... You could do this with any kind of steaky fish. Lemon fish is like a steaky fish. Just a little different. Watch what it does, though. Going to start cooking this lemon fish like this. Get a nice crust on both sides. And when we come back, I'm going to show you how we're going to kick it up a notch. Stay with us. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. All right. We're back. Just getting ready for the next dish right here, so I decided to do some little new potatoes that I sliced real thin. And then what I'm doing is I just fried them up a little bit like little chips, you see? And I got some onions that I've been having on the stove while you were probably getting a big munch in the refrigerator. And um, here's the onions right here that I got caramelized. And the fish, you see that beautiful crust? So here's the deal. You take those potatoes, put them right inside there like that. Then you take some fresh pepper, a lot of pepper, a little parsley like this, okay? Toss them up real nice. Now we got lionese potatoes. Put those on the base like that. Little lionese potatoes. Then, you 
take that lemon fish. Nice little piece of that lemon fish right on top of that, like that. If you want two pieces, you can do two pieces, okay? Then I got some beautiful crab meat here from Louisiana. You just toss that with a little bit of green onion remoulade like that. You see that? And then I like to just kind of toss that and put that right on there like this. You see? Have a taste of that. That'll make you happy. I love you. All right. Little parsley like that. Mm. That's how simple it is. What can I say? Hey, guys. Thanks for joining me tonight on Common Fish. I'm Emeril Lagasse, and I'll see you tomorrow.